outside off stump, trying to drive that, but there was no bounce there at all. It right on the bottom of the bat. That's the sort of uh, delivery that Aravinda likes to caress through the offside field. He tried to do just that, but no bounce. So it hit way down on the bottom of the bat. So there was no force off the, off the blade. Having the width, as uh, Tony was saying, no pace to really time it down to the uh, to get an amount of power behind that shot. It's a bit of a change in the breeze uh, this morning. It's, uh, it wasn't in its normal quarter, although it seems to have turned around. And it's back out of, uh, out of the southwest again, and you can see those flags. Uh, quite a nice breeze. And um, that is a bit of a godsend, actually, because it does help cool things down. Abdo Razak has uh, certainly got a bit of a breeze at his back now. It's uh, a slower delivery there and uh, nicely watched by Aravinda. It's a bit of variation by Abdu Razak. Fuller delivery, holding it back. Aravinda De Silva right on top of that one. It's almost like an off spinner rolling his fingers around that one. Fully focused, not trying to hit it too hard. Oh. It's the end of the over. It's 57 for two. Oh, yeah. I think they've decided that they're going to start shouting. This uh, business of padding it away, I think, uh, just judging by. Um, just judging by that concerted appeal there, uh, they all went up together. Which is the wrong one to appeal for. Way outside the off stump. Would have been a planned one. Very nicely played down towards the fine region. Worked well, looking for the second and getting the second. Slightly shortish. Arvind the Silva waited on that one. Um, played it really fine. Well controlled, the roll of the wrist at the last moment on impact, keeping the ball down and playing it fine. Wayne <laughs> Khan straight away blocking that region away, bringing a leg slip on. <laughs> Once again, the straight delivery, well watched by Arvind De Silva. Straight through. Nicely played by Arvinda, waiting for that one, just knocking into the gap. Fieldsman just a little deep there, allowing the single. That uh, relieves the pressure a little bit. 61 for two. Sixty-one for two. And uh, well, there's uh, Marvin Atapatu's father on the right-hand side, and that's Arjuna Ranatunga's mother in the lovely blue sari, looking lovely and cool there, watching proceedings. So uh, a lot of support from the uh, families of the Sri Lankan cricketers in particular. You see them, uh, you see a lot of them actually, uh, very sociable neck of the woods. I've been lucky enough on a few occasions to have uh, attended uh, a party or two at the uh, Arjuna's home. Or the Ranatunga home, should I say, that's the senior Ranatungas. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Ranatunga Sr. and a uh, oh, wonderful family. Rich in cricket history. Three of their sons played uh, test match cricket. Four of their sons have played one day international cricket. 
quite incredible isn't it really and there's the mother the mother of uh, three test match cricketers four one day international cricketers Six overs being bowled. Aravinder on 13. Arthur Putt is 38. tight bowling at the moment that's uh, obviously the plan let's keep them really tight let's try and frustrate them let's see if we can uh, create a situation where they will make mistakes out of frustration you really drain the runs up from Abdul Razak Zain got a line that he bows on the off stump and field is placed to stop any singles no runs to be really got and very disciplined bowling by Abdul Rasak. Oh, good shot into the gap. That'll help a bit and I should think that'll go for four as well. A lovely cover drive from uh, Aravinda de Silva. Yeah. The ball just a little bit full, a little wide and uh, he's caressed it through the offside field. Setting his sights on that one. He was ready for that and uh, on that occasion having the pace having the width and going right through with it, full face of the bat and getting the placement perfect. Well balanced. He knew exactly where he wanted that ball to go. Have a look at that rock solid forward defense after that uh, lovely cover drive. The score, 65 for two. Just Arshad Khan and Abdul Rasak doing the bowling for Pakistan. Oh, turn back, pitch out to the off stump, but the spin a bit too much. Umpire Buckner would have been wondering was it turning too much going down the leg side? Yes, they've decided obviously that uh, they're going to go up now. Is he playing a shot? I suppose that's the question. Uh, no doubt about the fact that he wasn't very difficult to give out, mind you. It, uh, it would have been very close, there's no doubt about that. Yes, I think uh, he's decided to change his strategy now. This business of just padding up, getting the uh, bat tucked in behind the leg. The umpire is uh, going to be very tempted to, to say, well, no shot offered. Uh, and that's not the way to do it, and uh, of course you can give him out. So they want to be a bit cautious about that. We are. Let's uh, just change things a little bit, those few shots. Uh, all of a sudden, Marvin Adapadu now looking to play a few shots, which I think is probably far better anyhow. The positive attitude to get the bat there. He waited on that one. Nicely rolling his wrist over it. Down towards the fine leg. That's the way to get about it, playing positive cricket. So 41, the partnership. It's, uh, it's a significant partnership in the context of this game. No doubt about that. Bear in mind, Jai Wadana is uh, due to come in next. Ranatunga, Kalu with Arana. The, uh, the, the batsman left in the lineup. Lovely bowling. That's the way. I have to say that uh, Aravinda is the one that looks comfortable. He doesn't uh, launch himself at the ball. He lets the ball come to him. Watch this. Watch how he uh, just leans back, lets it come, and then plays it on its merits as late as he possibly can. Oh. Quicker one. That's the uh, the one that's caused a few problems. Half a few problems. Half hearted appeal. It's and dropped. Just for a moment, one thought that would have carried to first slip. Moin Khan came in the way, and he's put it down. So an opportunity here for Pakistan has gone a begging. 
Well, no doubt that was going straight to Enzi at first slip. And the keeper's gone across. And once he commits, he's got to go all the way. And he's gone. And no doubt it would have carried to first slip. And a vital, vital chance for Pakistan gone begging. And look at the disappointment on Abdul Razak's face. You see it pitch and track away just like the previous delivery. He spars at it again. And Enzi had it lined up. And Mohan Khan, once he went, that's the golden rule. Once you go, go all the way. Good bowling by Razak. He had set it up nicely. Oh, this is about getting more behind it now. It's not to be. Ah! Wrapped on the pads. That's going to be close. Very close. Dot out says BC Kurai, but I'd like to have another look at it. From here, it looked, if he didn't get any bat on it, that uh, that might have just missed off stump and leg stump, but would have hit middle. Well, be interesting to see. It tracks back a long way. Puff of dust again. And he hasn't got an inside edge. And it's hit him outside the line. And I'm wondering if that's not a bad decision, Ravi. No question of the height at all. It's just whether it was going to hit the wicket. Yes, and I think it would have hit the wicket, but uh, what saved De Silva was uh, where the ball made contact with the pad. Well, this is superb bowling. He's bowled the leg cutter in this over, beat the batsman, taken the edge, and then got one to really come back in. Testing times for the master batsman, 67 for two. Taken. He's cut it upishly and hit it straight to side under. Good catch in the end. He had to dive forward. But the breakthrough has come here for Pakistan. Atta Padu, the man dismissed. Well, a bit of width offered and it turns and bounces and he actually didn't try to keep it down whatsoever. Probably got such a surprise with such a loose delivery and tried to put it away. Instead of placing it, and a good catch taken by Sahid Anwar. And Pakistan now get their first wicket of the morning, and 67 for three. So Mahela Jaiwardana comes out to the center. He was the vice captain uh, of the side a little while earlier, but Atapatu is now the vice captain. And uh, he was the last man to be dismissed, but Jaiwardana already a pretty good average in test match cricket. Averaging over 40. And a big double hundred on this ground against the Indians. The last man to be dismissed was Atapadu. Again, a little bit of extra bounce for Arshad Khan, but Atapadu will be disappointed that he didn't get this one away. Saidan were taking a good catch, moving forward. But just the wicket that Pakistan wanted and uh, Pat you were mentioning the strike not being rotated and the wicket's gone here. Yep. yep that's the start of it when you don't rotate the strike and you get stuck on one end and that's precisely what has happened here and if you change it around sometimes you wouldn't play that shot. So a, young, a test for the young Jawari now and he repeat his first innings form and stop the bleeding that's important now. Nice trip there for the off spinner. Again, some nice drift. Beautiful breeze coming across the ground for the spinner. Lovely bowling. Shabash, shabash, shabash. 67 for three. So Sri Lanka box now Ramiz Raja and Ranjit Fernando. Thank you, Ravi. Beautiful leg before. That's been happening uh, all through morning, but uh, the appeals have not really borne them many fruit. 
Arvind Lisuva, he's got uh, this habit of shoving his uh, front pad forward and um, just could see the bat behind the pad. Method there, Mohammed Basim holding on to that one. Uh, Steve Buckner not siding with the players. As you said, uh, Ramiz, there's going to be a lot of this throughout this day on this pitch, which uh, has turned for Arshad Khan in particular and probably Murli Dharan as it goes on. And uh, shoving up the pad with the bat inside uh, is going to be seen more and more. Nicely played, Vakar Yunus, just a little deep at uh, that mid-wicket position, allowing uh, Arvinda De Silva to pick up a run. I think the Sri Lankans need to be just a little bit more positive out there. This pitch not conducive for batting, anything can happen, an awkward bounce, an awkward delivery. And uh, get the bot batsmen uh, in problems. So that stay at the wicket should be worthwhile. It is something the Sri Lankans have to think about seriously as uh, with the fielders clustered around there one needs to try and um, shove one or two of them behind by some positive shots Arshad Khan is getting a bit of bounce and spin from this pitch the bounce was expected because he is a tall fast bowler in fact tall spinner nice loop and there you see the ball turn Oi! There's nothing more the spinners would like to have than to see um, a batsman, particularly the right-hander, to the off-spinner, just plodding there, not using their feet and looking for runs, or at least pushing the single. So the Sri Lankans would be looking to uh, try and uh, push the singles around, just shove the bat into some of the, uh, the ball into some of the gaps. This time it's taken by Mohammed Vaseem and given. So Ashad Khan striking. Mahela Jayavadna was living dangerously and paying for a poor technique there. This is certainly what uh, was worrying uh, everyone, the Sri Lankans in particular, there you are, that's just shoving the pad there, a little bit of bat and uh, a soft dismissal. Very easy catch there at uh, forward short leg. So that's the fourth Sri Lankan wicket that has fallen. Mahala Jayawadana, he goes. Arjuna Ranatunga, the new man in the ability to play the spin as well and it will be an important innings if you can uh, get on with it out there conditions not very easy ball uh, biting spinning and bouncing 36 years of age loads of experience and that's the reason why he's there Mahala Jayawad in a very soft dismissal just playing in front of the pad and a uh, bit of a nothing shot but pad and then an easy catch to Mohamed Wazim Well flighted from Arshad Khan. Uh, you see, uh, looking to play it on the onside, not to the pitch. Nice easy catch by Mohammed Wasim. Sritaj Junaranthuga now joining Arvind De Silva. They will firm together. It would be up to them to use all their experience. This pitch, uh, certainly not the easiest of pitchers to make runs but um, one needs to be more positive than what the Sri Lankans have shown so far. Yes, positive uh, and also lucky because we saw yesterday with C. Makram really played a very good knock, but he was lucky in his innings. Sri Lanka has not been able to hold on to a couple of difficult chances. The ball is reversing here for Abdul Razak. But, uh, the wicket doesn't have any pace. Once again, uh, appealing quite vociferously. BC Kure only signaling a leg by. So this reverse swing causing a few problems. But again, there was uh, the movement and that was uh, the reason that uh, the ball was certainly going down the leg side. So say. That looked very close. Shuffling across Arvinda De Silva. Maybe getting the benefit of the doubt because that front foot was outside the off stump. But uh, the impact looked pretty adjacent once again. Arvinda De Silva surviving. You can see the leg stump. You can't see the off stump. Uh, so there was a possibility that the ball might have just hit the stumps. 
umpire BC Korea giving the silver the benefit of the doubt. Consistency from umpires is what really is required. Nicely played by Arjuna Ranatunga, getting onto the front foot and playing it quite easily. Sri Lanka 72 for four. Edge and taken in Zamamul Haq, making no mistake that time. And Pakistan has picked up Arvinda De Silva. That really is a big, big blow for Sri Lanka. And uh, superb delivery right in the channel. Did a little bit, that late reverse swing. De Silva lunging forward with that bat outside. And a soft dismissal straight to Zamamul Haq. So the big blow for Sri Lanka. You see De Silva, a bit of a nothing shot, just forcing that bat in front of the pad and guiding it to uh, Insamamul Haq, uh, who didn't uh, make any mistake with that. So Sri Lanka lose their fifth wicket, the wicket of Arminda De Silva, caught by Insamamul Haq at first slip of the bowling of Razak. And Sri Lanka five down for 73. A lot now depends on Ramesh Kalubadurna. If he can play a cameo here, Sri Lankans uh, might get to a challenging score. That uh, would have Pakistan in a bit of uh, trouble. Ramesh Kalubadurna, that best of 132 was made here on this uh, single sports club grounds. Uh, on his debut, a superb innings that was. And uh, the Sri Lankans, without any doubt, would be looking to uh, Ramesh Kalubadurna to try and produce something like that. And uh, this is why he's there, De Silva just shoving that bat in front, sparring at it, more or less fishing, and uh, a very simple catch to win Samamul Haq. Nice shape away from uh, Arvinda De Silva, playing away from the front bat. And, uh, and Samamul Haq, sigh of relief there, after netting that one quite easily. Went straight to him, but uh, as we all know, no catch is easy at that slip position. Strengthening of the... Uh, field there's Gali in place now for the newcomer short leg also has been employed for Ramesh Kaluvidarna he'll be facing his first delivery from Abdul Razak Once again uh, getting a bit of uh, in swing there and Kaluvidarna straight away on that front foot he's one player who really can make the difference here very neat striker of the ball. An aggressive player. The pace pin combination of Razak and uh, Arshad Khan certainly has uh, paid off for Pakistan with both bowlers um, making an impact. Playing it away nicely. There's a gap between second slip and gully. This will run away to the boundary. Fielder was taken away from that position and put it that gully position. And Kalu Vidana managing to edge one to the boundary. Two full runs for Sri Lanka. And that again, a good, well-guided shot by Kalu Vidana. Soft hands, letting the ball run all along the ground. And uh, again, his positive attitude, always on the lookout for runs, uh, uh, has paid off. So Kalu Vidana has a big role to play here. Moin Khan realizing that every run is uh, as precious as gold. So, got that area covered now. Wakar Yun has been sent out there. And third man. So just two slips now in place for Ramesh Kalu Vidharna. The short leg uh, has been taken away as well. Put at mid-wicket. Cutting well uh, Kalu Vidharna. Straight to Wakar Yunus. Leg. Kalwitana's intentions quite clear. He's not um, in any way being threatened by the fall of wickets. He's quite con interested in uh, looking for runs wherever runs are possible. That really is the right approach. The Sri Lankans cannot really be getting too overcautious as um, they need to try and pick up runs to uh, set themselves with the target to bowl at the Pakistanis on this uh, last innings. <laughs> Running uh, with the shot and uh, Arjuna Ranatunga is off the mark. No hiccups there on that occasion. Sri Lanka 79 for five.
This game continued to grow into an interesting stage. And uh, the Sri Lankans uh, would be looking to uh, their past captain, Arjuna Ranatunga. The Singley Sports Club uh, is his um, own backyard, playing all his cricket here for many years. Last recognized pair in for Sri Lanka. Chalinda Vas, Soisa, Murlita and Fernando to follow. Need a good knock from Arjuna Ranatunga. He will be fully tested here. Slip, silly point. Short leg. Sarsha Khan attacking straight away. As a cushion, he's got an extra man on the offside. Uh, Yusuf Johanna, that cover area. Just a little up. For that anticipated uh, uppish drive through the offside. Sweeping, edge, taken. Empire says not out. A lot of noise out there. Catch it, taken, so on, but um, Empire Buckner unnerved and unmoved. Just uh, hitting the pad and uh, Yunus Khan making an effort, thinking that uh, Arjuna Nanatunga would have edged it. Umpire BC Kure moving uh, in to have a chat with uh, Captain Moin Khan. One wonders um, what confrontation has taken place over there. A few words probably. Come on. Things heating up out there. Pakistan sensing a kill here. They need to pick up uh, more wickets quickly. Oh, a boy. Very well Sri Lankans boy. looking for a partnership. Keen tussle, keen battle. Battle of nerves, battle of temperament, battle of commitment. This is a situation where partnerships are absolutely vital and uh, the Sri Lankans really haven't had any such uh, in this innings. Oh, wonderful flight from Ashok Khan. A wry smile from uh, Arjuna Ranatunga, letting the bowler know that he knew exactly what uh, he was trying to do. Ranatunga, he'll have to dig deep draw from all his experience, his resources. One, one this is one shot he plays so well. Not an easy shot to execute, playing it against the spin. Might just unsettle Arshad Khan if he carries on playing that kind of uh, stroke. Reach to the length. That covered the extra spin that Arshad Khan was supposed to get. Yes, indeed, uh, Ramiz, uh, that's a shot that uh, Ranatunga thrives on in situations such as this. The shot really not recommended to any young cricketer, but uh, Ranatunga does play it so very well, getting his pad across uh, and covering the line. Thinking to uh, really challenge Ashut Khan by coming down the track. Just at the last moment, uh, Ramesh Kaluvadarna. It is a bit of a cat and mouse game there. The Sri Lankans uh, looking to try and unsettle Ashad Khan. He's a bit bowling an immaculate line and length. Okay. Good over, good teasing over. Sri Lanka, 80 for 5. Oh! Living dangerously on that occasion, Arjuna Ranatunga. Just a faint uh, edge. Once again, having a word with the umpire, B.C. Kure. He seems uh, falling over just a little, but uh, managing to play it. Kept up the Razak interested for a while. Ranatunga completing the single in his usual casual manner, just walking the last few steps when not needed to. 
Harid. Kaluvedana has been pretty busy picking up a run of the last ball. Sri Lanka 82 for 5. Javed Miyadad, who's uh, next door the uh, Pakistan radio booth, having a chat with Chishti Mujahid, the Pakistani radio commentator. Arshad Khan has been tantalizing with his line and length, not giving an inch. I'll tell you more about his bowling, and uh, for the next half an hour, it's going to be Tony Gregg and Pat Simcox. Thank you, Ramiz. Yes, uh, things have taken a big change since I was last on air. Played a way to mid on, and uh, no more chances are going to be taken here, that's for sure. This is uh, going to have to be a huge fight now by the Sri Lankans. A little Kalu with Arana, who's not been in great form with the bat, and uh, he's going to have to rise to the occasion. He's had plenty of experience. And of course, uh, the old campaigner down the other end. Just pad. Oh, he's given him. He's given him. Yes, he waited there. I must say, I was very surprised at that. Little Kalu with Arana has been given out. And uh, while I don't want to prejudge it before I see the replay, my reaction, Pat, was not out. Well, Tony, it's a long way from here to there, so let's not prejudge it, but mine was exactly the same. And uh, the replay should tell us he pushes forward. And hits the pad first. Well, does it strike the glove on the way out? Well, well from that angle we won't know, but uh, I can tell you one thing, that uh, the other angle will tell us uh, exactly what happened, because uh, when we come back we'll try and show you another angle and uh, we'll see how close that ball was to the glove on the way up. 82 for 6. Jamin Foss is the new batsman and uh, a very disappointed uh, Kalu with Arana is back in the pavilion. He was uh, given out caught at forward short leg. There were obviously a couple of noises. The bat uh, clearly made a noise as it went in behind the pad. Jamin Foss, 26 years of age, an average of 18.4. Uh, what we've got to do here is try and establish whether the ball hit the glove on the way up. Now, the angle that uh, is helpful in these situations is uh, the square on angle. Now, just watch this. Very slowly, we'll just go through this. It hits the pad and then goes forward. And there's no way in the world that, that ball is anywhere near the glove. So that first replay you saw, we, saw, we might have a, another look at that. It's a little bit deceptive because it makes it look as if the ball on the way up actually hit the glove. Just watch this. Here we go. And that looks as if it hit, just might have just flicked the glove on the way up. And when we look at that square on shot, we then see that uh, in point of fact it's a long way away from the glove so I think we've uh, established with the benefit of all these cameras let's watch this again that's the super slow-mo camera it's the pad and then goes up in the air maybe umpire Buckner from his position thought there might have been a little flick on the glove as it went up uh, it was nicely taken of course but uh, it's that square on shot Pat that I think tells the story yes Tony you recall it right um, he's a long way away from the glove Lovely balling, Shabash, Shabash, Yes, uh, that was the shot that uh, that told the story. Very easy for us. This is the one. You watch him come forward here, and you watch the ball hits the pad, and it goes straight forward. The, the gloves aren't there. Uh, the ball never touched those gloves, that's for sure. So, uh, well, uh, we've got the benefit of uh, side-on cameras, we've got the benefit of super slow-mo cameras, big lenses. It's obviously a lot easier for us. Umpire Buckner can only call it as he sees it, and uh, he obviously thought that was out, so he gave it out. And uh, you can't ask uh, for much more than that of an umpire. No, you can't, Tony. Um, unfortunately, at times, uh, critical decisions like that can alter a match. And... Uh, that's what Sri Lanka will be arguing. But right now, they're back to the wall. And the two left-handers in now, not easy against the off-spinner. One um, little question I'd like to ask you, Pat. Is it possible that he gave him that LBW? We'll come back and have a look at that in a minute. It's 83 for six. Well, now, Jinnarena Tunga having a chat to Shimon Devas. He'll be encouraging him along, explaining to him 
There's a couple of harsh words spoken uh, an over or two ago between Ranatunga and Moan Khan and call the umpire in. So there's a lot of action, yeah? And Sri Lanka are really back to the wall. I've um, just asked Pat Simcox the question as to whether it's just possible that uh, umpire Buckner could have been uh, giving the batsman out LBW on the basis that he wasn't playing a shot. Let's have a look. Well, an interesting observation. I thought he was playing a shot myself. Uh, and uh, if you're giving that out to LBW, well then, Tony, uh, this old game has got beyond us. I think that point's well made. You can see the bat there coming into line to try to play the ball. The ball then spins a little bit more than uh, the batsman anticipated. Uh, it, it is, though, a bit of a problem. I mean, you and I know that batsmen tuck the bat in behind the pad. No real intention to play the ball, hoping it will hit the pad. That seemed to be the case there. It's possible that that one spun back and it could have hit the stumps, but really... I don't think we'll find that umpire Buchner will confirm that that was an LBW. I think he'll say that uh, he gave it out court. Yes, and you pay the price because it's really a poor technique, isn't it? I mean, the object of the exercise is to play the ball. And if you're going to come out there and push your pads in the way, uh, then um, you're asking for trouble. But the tech, getting back to the technique side of it is clearly Kalawitharana picked the long, wrong line and uh, committed himself too far into the off stump. And the ball comes back at you, you're in trouble. It was a Macrum. He's a class act. He turned the game single-handedly yesterday on its head. I believe that was the turn of the game. What a performer he has been, was a Macrum. Look at that. 96 matches, 400 wickets at an average of 23. And he's still got a bit of gas in the tank, I believe. Well, uh, spare a thought for Abdul Razak. 11 overs, 6 maidens, 1 for 14. And bowling for an hour and a half. That's not bad, is it? No, certainly not. Not bad at all. <laughs> Only got one. He had Aravinda the Silver dropped early on. Probably look back at that and say, well, had that been taken while I was still fresh, I could have been the guy taking all the wickets. So we've now had confirmed from the centre that uh, that decision was uh, was given out court. That's one of the other wonders of uh, modern technology where the umpires can actually communicate uh, with their colleagues through the walkie-talkies. Well, now that's an interesting observation, that, that in itself, when you send a message out to the umpire to ask whether it was out of LBW or court, he must realise that uh, we got the benefit of a view from up here and uh, what the hell's going on, he's saying. I'm not suggesting that he would uh, quickly say, I gave him LBW. No, I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm just saying that if I was standing out there and I gave a clear court in my mind and the television people wanted to know whether it was court or not or well be, I'd be saying to myself, did they hit it or not? Well, I'm wondering. Either that or you'd say something along the lines, look, you've got uh, 15 cameras and uh, you've got microphones and all that, you work it out. <laughs> Now they're very obliging, uh, the umpires. They make their decisions. They're happy to live by their mistakes, and obviously that's the way it's got to be. It's very tough. I mean, there's no way in the world on, on uh, in matches like this where there are lots of bat pads, and they're the tough ones, because uh, definitely a lot of appeals, half-hearted appeals, full-on appeals, four little bat pads. Did it touch the bat? Didn't it? They're trying to get it right. They call it as they see it, and sometimes they get it wrong. That's the way it is. Oh, and a uh, pretty late response come there on, from the on, non striker then. Come on, come on now, and shit. The boss is looking over his shoulder. And that's the end of the over. It's 85 for six. Well, the two batsmen getting together again. And no doubt that uh, Arjuna will be saying, it's my call, young man. And I was going to make it easily. Don't worry, I got run out in the first innings. I'm not about to do that again in a hurry. Just need to form a strategy here. Circle the strike, don't get caught on one end. Pick up the singles. See it through to lunch now, that's the next total. Next target. Uh, 
and uh, the bowling figures to date. Wakai hasn't been introduced as yet. Nine overs, one for 21. But Abdul Razak, 14 overs for 23. Just the one wicket. Lovely bowling, lovely bowling. Arjuna, an experienced campaigner. He's uh, got nerves of steel. He's seen this all before many times. He'll know how hard it is to fight out of this position. Played the lead at the moment. Uh, goes on to 93. It comes up to 94. Perhaps I'll take another one. That makes the lead 95. Every run absolutely vital. How many do you reckon they need? Well, I see you said 250 yesterday, and I, if I recall, I said uh, any side that got 180 uh, would uh, win the test match. If I wouldn't want to chase 180 um, at this stage, uh, with more from bowling at the end. Pakistan will be aware of it. And Juno Renatunga, he just places it so beautifully. Here's the wrists, it's on the ground. <laughs> Good fielding that, chasing the ball behind, making sure that if it has, if it's a close call, you can flick it back. Go! And, uh, off the pad, I suspect. Uh, it looks as if Wazim saying, "Did he play a shot?" And I think the umpire there, agreeing with Wazim, no shot offered, dead ball, no runs recorded. Well, did he play a shot or not? No, I don't think he did. He stuck that bat behind the pad. Now, he also plants the foot on the off stump, the Shimon device, to the, the off spinner. And I fancy with a bit of drift that uh, Khan was getting, he fancy to start it on the leg stump, pitch it just outside the leg stump, and he could even get an opportunity to bowl him around those legs. Lovely bowling, lovely bowling. Achha, Shabash, Shabash, Shabash. Shabash, Shabash. first innings went on a sweep and uh, got out being bowled around his legs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's exactly what happened in the first innings and I'm sure he's wary of that again. He was trying to get it away fine, yeah, yeah, it. very fine. Shabash, Shabash, Shabash. Over the top there, and uh, that's good. you've got to be very careful. There's a bit of rough around there, and uh, of course, uh, that was a risky shot. I think you probably put it away. That's the end of the over. It's uh, 88 for six. Once again, Angina and Shimon Devas. Just talking through the strategy. A lot of talking going on at the moment on the field. Rashid Khan. Just having a discussion with uh, Inzi. So Wazi Makram continuing Zoysa, Murali Dirin and Fernando to follow. So you'd have to say the tail arrives. Uh, Voss has uh, been known to make a few runs. He's uh, not. Good bouncer, that one. Yes, a real good bouncer. And Ozamakram has managed to bring in a man just behind Ajuna's back, just for the tickle around the corner. What a short, fine leg was it? With a short leg slip, I'd say. That's the bouncer just lining him up, making sure that he stays on us and doesn't jump onto that front foot. There he is. There. Oh, I tell you what, he played that one very well too. It's a good job uh, he kept his eye on that because uh, he was about to duck underneath that one. He would have ducked right into it and uh, managed to uh, get himself back. You see there, he was going down and then managed to pull back. Yes, and this will be part of the play, is to keep him on the back foot. 
He's not a hooker. Keep him on the back foot and suddenly try and sneak one up at him through a swing. Wasn't looks like he's enjoying this reverse swing now. He knows it's all action now. Yes, he's got a nice breeze at his back. He's got such a, a deceptive uh, change of gear, isn't he? He comes up, he looks so relaxed. He looks like a medium pacer. But he's uh, very much a quick bowler. That bouncer, uh, he doesn't give anything away. Oh, well bowled again. He's certainly got it moving around. Yes, you talk about giving nothing away. Was a Macram's a perfect exponent of that when he's bowling with reverse swing. Yeah, you can see he closes the ball completely. You have no idea. And you see the ball swinging there towards the shiny side, which is the reverse swing. In the air, and that's out. He's chipped it up on the onside. Was he Macram? has turned that ball around, that one went in, swung into him, he was just falling over it a little bit, so reverse swing working for them here, Sri Lanka are in trouble now, that was just chipped away on the onside, and so Wasim Akram takes yet another wicket, he really worked away well there, he's got it going all over the place, he will finish this innings quickly, mark my words, watch that one go in, he falls over a little bit, trying to keep it down, but couldn't do that, and the catch easily taken. Right, so Rana Tunga out, caught by Wazim of the bowling of, uh, correction, caught by Saeed of the bowling of Wazim. And, uh, well, he's out for seven. And Sri Lanka now, 88 for seven. Well, the new batsman in, Nuan Zoysa. Young man, 22, he played 10 matches. And his highest score of 26, averaging nine. And he doesn't come to the wicket with a lot of experience or confidence at this stage, facing the all-time great exponents of swing bowling, Wazim Akram. Yes, get ready for a rip-snorting, uh, in-swinging Yorker. He's uh, loosening up those uh, limbs of his at the moment. He wants to make sure he's got that bat right down and ready to uh, dig out a Yorker. That's the dismissal again, a little chip up on the onside. So, we'll see if we can uh, pick what's going to happen here. What's he going to start with? One that rips in. Oh, here we go. <laughs> The attempt at an in-swinging Yorker, very well played actually by Sosa, manages to get it back. And uh, of course that's the end of a very good over from Wazim Akram. So Sri Lanka remain on 88 for seven. Have a look at this delivery, swings in late. It was just slightly overpitched, and uh, he managed to get it away right off the base of the bat. Pretty casual customer, uh, Zoysa. Just uh, gets it away there, a very clonky noise because it hit down the base of the bat. This uh, Sri Lanka now are in trouble. Well, Wazim Akram knows that two or three more overs and he gets one or two in the right area. He's going to pick up some more. That's the sorry, sad sight of Sri Lankan batting lineup. 88 for seven in just 44 overs. Marvin had a patio and De Silva offering real resistance. Well, well played, into the gap it goes, every run absolutely vital, and this one's going to be pretty close to the boundary, just to Tavares. Yes, he's quite an aggressive player, Jamin Tavares, which, uh, which uh, I hope he sticks with, because uh, that's his best chance of getting his team out of a spot of bother. Tavares scores a uh, 40-odd here in quick time, that'll be invaluable. Yes, I agree with you, he's got, that's the way now, the best way of defence is to attack a little bit. Remember that these two are the opening bowlers and they dished it out to Wazim Akram for a while, so they'll be knowing of that. Yeah. So I think um, those few really good bounces that he bowled to Arjuna Ranatunga had, a, had um, the desired effect. Got him thinking about the short ball and then of course bowls him a beauty and um, his mind's on the short ball a little bit and you end up chipping it up on the onside so the next over he bowls I think you could expect a short one or two just to get the attention of the batsman and um, get their adrenaline up a little bit and then he'll home in with one of those beautiful swingers of his yes and he also combined he put that man at, at a 45 catching behind and Ajana Ranatunga likes to use the pace of the ball he likes to dab it down on a leg side and the offside as well and by putting that man there around the corner he couldn't do that he had to play in front of the wicket and a 
that was what it was the undoing. Lovely bowling, lovely bowling, Ashad Chabash. Oh, well bowled. Put a bit of bat on it. That makes it 101. That Simcox reckons if they can get to about 185, well, they've uh, got a chance. So every run is vital. Well done. Quick single again. The field's been back there. That's Mushtak. Just a little bit too deep. So the end of the over. 97 for seven. Well bowled. That's the quicker yeah, one. Yeah. That was the yeah, yeah, yeah. Down. Yeah, yeah. He wants the second one. Zoysa. Ballin, ballin. Back he goes. That's good running. And that brings up uh, the 100 for Sri Lanka. 100 with seven wickets down. Thank you, Tony. Excellent figures there for Arshad Khan. That's good shot. Got into position quickly, Vas. And once again, a chase for Mushtaq Ahmad. He's had plenty of running to do today. And one thing good from the Sri Lankan point of view, uh, both these batsmen are thinking and playing positively. Yes, it's a very refreshing approach. And they've uh, come out there with a the purpose. The instinctive uh, plays uh, being backed by boldness and approach, and uh, it's working well for the Sri Lankans. That's up in the air. And once again landing in between the two fielders. Let's put it this way, Zoysa couldn't have placed it better, Ramiz. Yes, I'd uh, said earlier, Ravi, that uh, yesterday the Seamakram played well, but he was lucky also in that innings. And uh, here today, you need to have uh, luck in your favour. And Zoy and Chaminda Vas, although uh, living dangerously, but surviving. And that is what is important and vital in the end. Well placed between Mushtaq Ahmed and Yunus Khan. So he's testing both the batsmen with short deliveries. It's Vas on strike now. Again, defending it off quite nicely, Chaminda Vas, doing uh, the basic things right here. Watching the ball, getting down, making sure that he's got nothing to do with that one. It's another good thing he gets his gloves out of the way. Drops his wrists. It's a pretty capable bat, Chaminda Vas. Beautifully bowled, there's no gully. So the frustration continues. 105 for seven. And he almost succeeded there. The Pakistanis must not let them uh, get frustrated. Things haven't really worked uh, for them in the last half an hour or so. The plan is working, but not entirely. I think one thing the Sri Lankans would learn from uh, what Wasim Akram is doing here is that uh, they must show a lot more aggression when they're bowling to tailenders. When Arshad Khan was batting yesterday, one thought that was missing. Now that's a fine shot. Good effort in the deep by Arshad Khan. This is one area where Pakistan has definitely scored. Their fielding has really improved. Arshad Khan used to be a pretty ordinary passenger in the outfield. But he has really worked very hard to become one of the better ones now. This was a brilliant effort. Diving full length, desperate effort, desperate dive. Exactly knowing that the situation demanded this kind of an effort. 
Yes, he saved a couple of runs for his side, and one mustn't forget he's bowled a long spell already. He's bowled unchanged since the morning. And once again, frustration for the bowler. A welcome boundary here for the Sri Lankans. 113 for seven. Frustrating times for the Pakistanis here. Think probably trying to do something extra, something special here to get rid of uh, Zoysa and Chaminda Vas. In the air, and uh, this one's going to be just short. Yes, it was a top edge and went fine. And that was a good bouncer, and uh, once again, Vice having a go at it. He got a top edge on it. It looked as if for a second it may just be going straight to Waka, but uh, you know, it was a bit fine and uh, didn't quite get there either. The Sri Lankan pair have been living dangerously. Once again, Chamin Dubas picking the bait up, but landing safely away from Waka and is down there at fine leg. Playing a shot at that one. Waka, correction, Wazim. Wazim thought he had him out. I thought he got outside the line. And uh, Wazim really uh, turning it on out there. He'd have to be just a little bit careful. Umpire, or should we say match referee, Reed is quite severe on um, any, of, uh, any of this sort of behaviour. I think my first reaction, uh, Ranjit, was that he got outside the line. It'll be interesting to see the replay. Yes, my reaction too was that um, Nuan says a mood right across outside the off stump and um, umpire BC Kuru was certainly unmoved. Let's have a look at this. Why well, did pitch outside off stump and it also hit uh, Nuan Soy's outside off stump. In fact, a very, very good decision. Great decision that was. Perfectly correct by umpire BC Kuru. He uh, got himself a long way across, got outside the line. He was playing a shot. And uh, while the ball may just have hit the stumps, uh, the fact that he was outside the line is enough. Yes, I think it was an excellent decision. And uh, certainly despite all those tantrums of uh, Wazim Akram, one must give the umpire a great deal of credit. Wazim Akram is angry. There is no doubt about that. And uh, there's a bouncer. This is, could be out. Oh, is he? Oh, no, it's not going to make... Yeah, oh, well taken. Wazim Akram's done it himself. What a magnificent bit of fielding that was. I was down there looking at, looking at a panicky little mushy running in. Wazim Akram has run, well, it must have been about 40 metres to take that catch himself. Leave it to me, fellows. I don't want anyone else involved in this. I'm angry. That is sensational cricket by Wazi Makram. One can really imagine what it is when this man's angry. A short pitch delivery, the batsman going for the hook, and Wazi Makram, he was the one running almost 40, 50 meters to get under that. And how comfortably he got there, that was uh, just had to be seen to be believed. Absolutely brilliant cricket. Just what Wazi Makram. And he's got under it and completed a very comfortable catch. Let's just watch his reaction here as well. Absolutely magnificent. Have a look at that. I think, uh, do you think he might have enjoyed that? I think he probably did. So Wazim Akram turning it on here at the SSC. And uh, that's the end of Chaminda Vice out for a very useful 20. It's 120 for eight. Dilhara Fernando arrives at the crease and uh, well, I'll tell you what, he's gonna arrive to a bit of a storm. There's no doubt about that. He's down at the safe end. And uh, at the moment, it's going to be Zoysa, who was given not out LBW, who is going to face the wrath of Wazim Akram. Let's have another look at this wonderful catch. Just watch this. Here he goes. Up she goes. Wazim Akram, very late, decides to take off. He's out of picture now. Mushtak is stuttering down there. And uh, he thinks he might, it might be his catch. And then he sees the figure, the, illo the looming figure there of the captain. Oh, and that's out too. He's got him. It's off his glove. Well, he's got the wicket. Got the wicket of uh, 
of Zoysa there. Zoysa looking down at his glove. That was obviously a stinging uh, delivery. Fast, furious stuff. Well, there's one thing you shouldn't do. That's, that's make Wasim Akram angry. <laughs> that's a lesson one should really learn. He's certainly on fire. And what a delivery, that one. Short outside door of stump, rearing on Zoysa. Zoysa's a tall man. He gets it on the glove and a very comfortable catch. Just see that delivery. So he said, just couldn't, couldn't get it out of the way. It was just coming in on to him and in Sabamul Haka. Simple catch to him. So Sri Lanka lose their ninth wicket. And Wazim Akram, he now is a content man. Yes, uh, big smile on his face. It's changed a bit, hasn't it? It's 120 for nine. Really didn't. I've got to tell you, he'll be a little bit nervous about this. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And what's more, Wazi Makram has already taken two hat-tricks in his career. If he gets a wicket off this ball, that'll be three hat-tricks in Test cricket. And uh, worse than that, all of them have been against Sri Lanka. So um, a precedent has been set. He's still got a third man down there. Murali has arrived at the centre. This uh, is the wicket of Zoysa. It flicks the glove. It goes straight through to Inzi. And uh, he watched it straight in and uh, took the catch so that was the end of Zoysa now then they're dragging us out from Murali he won't be enjoying this he'll want to get this out of the way certainly the first delivery uh, rest assured on one thing he'll be he'll be doing his level best I don't think he's going to be in line though it's not his way he tends to back away a little bit this is going to be a rip snorting in swinger right at his toes in he comes could he bowl a get a hat trick oh it's well played he's got it away that was a good delivery Murali wanted one, but he's been forced to take two. <laughs> that suited Murali Dharan. He wouldn't have minded the Yorker. What he was, what I'm sure, worried about was the short one. And as soon as it got there, in the spot, he was quickly putting it away. Right, now having got that one out of the way, Murali would have realised, well, he's got to try and bowl me out. The problem now is that uh, he's likely to rush in and bowl a bouncer. He's likely to bowl anything. So uh, this is where the batsmen, certainly the tailenders, get a little nervous. Akram did Murli didn't. A long way away, big appeal for court behind. Bat actually hit the uh, ground there, nowhere near the ball. Yes, Murli's bat uh, certainly was not close enough. He was backing away and uh, bat hitting the ground. But this has continued to be an interesting over. One wonders what's crossing Murli didn't mind. In the air and down to third man. Murali Duran gets a single. Right. Well, now it's uh, it's over to Fernando. Yes, that's amazing. Murali Duran still got a smile on his face. I, I'd like to suggest it's a nervous smile. Yes, I think Murali was also able to bring a bit of a smile on Basim's face after that. Uh, Fury spell of Fury, previous deliveries that he'd been uh, bringing about. Right, here we go. Last ball of the over. Oh, a quick one. Into the thigh pad there of uh, Fernando. The end of the over. Sri Lanka, 123 for nine. So Voss and Zoysa, both back in the pavilion as a result of uh, some great bowling by Wazi Makram. He's got the ball in his hand again. He's bowling to Fernando now. Ooh, and uh, that's nicely played, actually, just steering it away on the offside. A fast delivery aimed at off stump. Uh, Voss uh, was the first man to go. Wonderful catching this by uh, the bowler, Wazi Makram. There is a hook shot. He then headed off in the direction of where the ball went. And uh, it took a magnificent catch. Wazi Makram enjoyed every second of that. That's for sure. Wonderful. The next one. Reflection straight to slip. Nicely caught by uh, Inzamam. Oh, and it's bowled him. That's the end of the innings. That's a fast delivery. Swinging back and well bowled Wazi Makram. It makes a huge difference, doesn't it? If you can really finish off the tail, that's what Sri Lanka couldn't do to Pakistan. Had they been able to finish off the tail, 
they would have been well placed right now. The difference in this match so far has been Wazi Makram and the way he's attacked the tail end. This is how it goes. Yes, this certainly is the difference. And when you have someone like Wazi Makram on your side, it's not hard to do. And this makes the difference. And what a fine spell of bowling by Wazi Makram on a pitch which is placid. He's rocked the Sri Lankan tail and picked up four magnificent wickets. It's an incredible performance by Wazim Akram. Actually, the 25th time that he's got five in an innings. A wonderful performance. And uh, Sri Lanka bowled out for 123 in 61.3 overs. Uh, not even quarter to two in the afternoon. So uh, this has been a wonderful performance by Pakistan. One hundred and twenty three all out. Not a very pretty scorecard, really. Atapatu top scorer with 40 and uh, a couple of 20s, one from De Silva and then Vast down the lower order. But uh, when looking at that scorecard, doesn't look uh, doesn't look great for me. Sri Lanka really needed to fight a little bit harder in the second innings. So an angry was in Makram. He's uh, virtually mutilated the, the Sri Lankan bottom batting was Soiza, Fernando, all going to him and uh, saw some wonderful seam bowling by this great bowler certainly was 3.3 overs three for six in that spell so they're the uh, partnerships and you can see there are really only two major partnerships the third wicket and the eighth wicket so uh, a very good uh, performance that and uh, he well he ended up with five for 45 or 15.3 and as i said a, a spell there of 3.3 overs three for six uh, he hasn't he's had a bit of a torrid time of late hasn't really played all that well so he'll be looking for a good performance oh, that's wrapped on the pads was he hit in line there is a big stride forward but it came back into the right hander well well that is a good good shot as far as i was concerned let's have a look at the line there's no doubt it pitches on line and well he couldn't have complained with that if you're giving it out there's no doubt it's not going to miss much. Certainly not going to go over the top. Very, very good shot. Definitely struck in line. And I think the batsman's a little lucky to be still there. Just past the forward shot leg. There was some bat on it. Well, once again, Mohamed Wazim picks the wrong line to the ball that swings in, places his left foot too far on the offside and ends up getting on the wrong side of the ball. That's what causes the outside edge and tantalizingly close. Very lucky to survive. Watch the left foot. It's on the wrong side of the ball and makes him play across it. And again, well, he's not learning. <laughs> the good thing for him is that he's still there. That's picked away on the onside. Just pulled back inside the boundary. So a couple of runs for Mohamed Wasim. That's a tremendous shot. Fine leg will cut it off. The runs coming freely here for Pakistan. Four overs have been bowled, 15 for no loss. To put the pressure on this uh, Pakistani opening pair. That's in the air, it's going to be out. Oh yes, he's got him. That's a big wicket. That's a huge wicket. It's the wicket they wanted. Well, the short delivery, two men back, going for the hook shot, and uh, well, Zoiza strike. Said Anwar has hit that one straight down square leg's throat. Well, he hit it pretty hard and went straight to the fielder. In the earlier scene, uh, ball falling short of the fielders. Not in a very good position to play it down along the ground, and uh, Dilhara Fernando taking a very good catch once again in the deep. That's a big blow. 
uh, Sayed Anwar. And the ability to play uh, the trump card Murli Dharan with authority. He's gone early for six in Pakistan, lose their first wicket for 19. So Yusuf Yohana has been promoted uh, up the batting order for the second innings. Just uh, 25 years of age and uh, an average of 36. Not to anticipate uh, the game plan here. We've got to go at that one. Smash that one away into mid-wicket. Yes, I think they've decided to go uh, the aggressive course. Yes, it does help matters when you're playing with the bat and not the pad. 107 more runs to get to win this match. Into the gap. Back for the second. Probably the yes, back they come. That's very good aggressive running. Would have been very easy to settle for two there. And uh, that wasn't the case. They went for three and got it. Well, straight over the top. I think they're going the aggressive course. That's running away down to the boundary for four. So first ball from Moodley Didden. Dispatch straight over the top of his head for four. smile on his face he got that yeah nearly uh, getting under the bat there just surya chasing by signal so it's missed a lot so it's run right across everybody on that occasion good hit a good positive blow from Mohammad Wasim. He's picked the length up so quickly and smashed it in front of square. They really got what it deserved. The full treatment by Mohammad Wasim. Hey, people are scuttling around and saying, come on, let's just get it back on course. And it tends to happen. hit the stumps it's hit the stumps he's away out of his ground now the question is was he bowled or uh, did it hit the i think it might have hit the hit the bat and rolled down onto the stumps or did it hit the weir keeper and roll back onto the stumps well you were talking about a little bit of a flutter it may have started let's have a look at this dismissal well it's interesting to see that it's the leg spinner and it's come off the bat pad and then he's almost pushed it down onto the wicket Yes, it was because he was out of his ground. I thought for a second it might be a, a stumping, but it hit the stumps and uh, he still wasn't back in his crease. He was worried about being out of his ground. Well, that's the end of that. Another wicket has fallen, and so um, well, that does change things slightly. Yusuf Johanna at 3-11. In Zaman Al-Haq. Striding out to the centre, he received a nasty delivery in the first innings, one that reared up, and uh, he gloved it away into the gully region, was out caught in that area. An average of 45, it's a very good uh, average. Yes, um, here we go again, it's certainly a very risky delivery. That's his mystery ball. And uh, there, she go there she goes, onto the, uh, onto the stumps, and off the bowl goes. That's a, delivery. That's a very well bowl delivery, and out, he's given him out. Well, incredible, I thought that bounced a long way. Now then, it was obviously the one that spun back the other way. Sri Lanka making headway making headway they are <laughs> they certainly are and this is the leg spinner it spins in and well for me that is out and he's misread it got on the wrong side of the ball and now he's pushed his pad a little bit wider and saying please don't give me out there's no doubt and so another wicket goes yes uh, another wicket certainly goes and uh, it's now 52 for three Oh, it's a bit big for Mo and Khan. It's uh, Wazim Akram. Well, uh, he was obviously not ready, and uh, <laughs> he's striding out there now, still doing his buckles up. Well, that's well played. That's very well played. Short outside off stump, and Inzama Malhaka smashed that away square on the offside. 
lovely lovely shot very forceful not a very good delivery mind you a little short outside off stump well Enzima I don't believe is going to stick around there just hanging in he got out last innings from a nasty delivery it took off a length from a tall man Zoysa and uh, there's another tall man bowling right now Fernando Oh, that's well played. Beautiful straight drive for four. There's somehow, somehow Jaya Saria has got to find a way of putting some pressure on at the other end. That's it. Got him. What a silly point. No need to give him out. That's beautiful bowling. Inzamam. Out court. Quicker delivery there from Murali Dillon. He is bowling superbly. He's spinning them both ways. There are mystery balls all over the place. That was a quicker one. Pad bat beautifully caught on the offside as well. Inzamam Al Haq out caught. What a good delivery! He pushes forward and the still a winner's turning both ways, but a, is a, that is a sharp, sharp catch. Lovely, lovely fielding. Russell Arnold beautifully caught, youngster. Right, so there we are, out for third. Caught by Arnold and on the offside at Silly Point. And so that makes Pakistan now four down for 66. Mohan Khan needs to play a captain's innings here. That's for sure. He's capable of it. There's no doubt about that. He's uh, got an average of just under 30. Oh, that's well played. He likes the sweep shot and uh, he's got it away nice and fine. Four immensely valuable runs. Yes, I think he'll try and put that sweep shot into, into play. In fact, whenever you're not sure which way the ball's going to spin, it's not a bad idea. Always dangerous against Mulidran, especially when he's bowling around the wicket. He's decided to go around the wicket. <clears throat> to Wasim Akram. Hitting and coming back, but... Umpire must be convinced enough that if it's coming back to hit the wicket. Not play a shot, so it doesn't matter if his impact was also the off stamp. But a big one there. That's yes, good positive blow. Down the ground for four. We saw him do that even in the first innings early on against Mulidharan. Akram hurrying here. A direct hit was what was required. That would have been curtains for Wasim Akram. He was taking on Jay Surya. So the pressure telling on the Pakistani batsman, they're taking chances now. They don't want to be tied up, but that was a wrong call there from Wasim Akram. Playing quite hard to uh, Sanat Jaisuri, to his left, to advantage of Jaisuriya. And if he hit Wasim Akram, not even in the frame there. The first task would be to reach that 100 run mark. Psychologically, that will make a, a big difference. And Wasim Akram here. Is bringing all his experience into play. He's carted Murlidharan on the onside. Would have been uh, much more difficult for the batting side. Left on the pads here once again. This time the finger goes up. A long way by umpire BC Kure. He really had a good think on that one. Almost as if he had second thoughts on the whole matter. And then the finger enter. I really like the look where that ball pitched. I think it came back, but uh, it'll be interesting to see the height. Now the pitch is in line. Puff of dust there. And hits him reasonably high on the pads. Now we've got to see how far forward he is. Look at the side shot, as Robbie was saying. And the bounce really a bit high. He's quite upright, the Moin Khan. And look, he's standing outside the crease. So I would think he's rather unfortunate to be given out there. He'll consider himself unlucky. He's gone for 11 and Pakistan 89 for 5. on the offside this time. Another couple added to the score. A 
It's up in the air. And will it clear mid on? Yes, it just does. Pass was running back. Two runs to end the over, 95 for five. Shots in the air at times. This is a beautiful drive. They'll be running very hard because this might not go to the boundary. A brilliant effort by Sana Jasuria. Desperate stuff. Leading by example here. Finish Khan making use of the half volley. Very close to the boundary line. And uh, that foot touching the rope. Very close. The umpires having a close look and given a boundary. So the third umpire was convinced that the foot had touched the rope. Cutting against the spinning, finding the gap this time. Just a single, uh, beautifully done by Dilhara Fernando. who's had a good day in the outfield. Hitting him straight back. And this was nicely picked up. And that will run away to the boundary. So Yunus Khan uh, breaking the shackles there. Pakistan, 110 for five. 14 runs to win the test match. Murali Diran is the man who could possibly create a little bit of pressure here, but it's slipping away from Sri Lanka now. Uh, there's, uh, there's no real point in having too many fieldsmen back. I think you've got to have them up, try and get some wickets here. Save the singles. Force them to do something silly. We're down to the desperate stage. Over the top she goes, way over the top. That's beautifully hit. That's six onto the roof. That's a wonderful hit. Well, Wazi Makram goes down the wicket and pats his uh, younger charge on the, on the shoulder. It's a great shot from uh, Yunus Khan. Makram uh, going down the wicket to congratulate him. It's a very confident shot. Right down on that one. It's under it and over and out. And it looked very positive from the moment he came in. He kept the scoreboard ticking over. Didn't get stuck. Lost his captain. Replaced his captain out there and he played positively since then. It's a good play off spin. Straight down the ground, beautifully played. Six, will it be? Yes, that's it. Finishes the test match with a straight six. That's wonderful play. Well, what a victory this has been for Pakistan. Six signal there by the umpire. And Pakistan have won the first test match in this HNB Test Series 2000. They've won it despite the fact that there were occasions in this match when it looked as if it could quite easily go to Sri Lanka. Well, the Sri Lankans out there congratulate him, Wazim Akram in particular, because, boy, did he make a contribution to the test match. It was a wonderful effort by him. A great effort with the bat in the first innings. A tremendous effort with the ball. And uh, here he is now, finishing it off with the bat again. He's the main man that stood between... Uh, that's the six that brings a victory for Pakistan. Just six away, and Yunus Khan confidently hitting it right over right into the side screen for a six. Wazim Makram having a great game here, really bringing Pakistan from a position that they were really down with the fantastic 88, then coming in bowling and capturing five wickets. And he was a man who stood between Sri Lanka and Pakistan. Yes, yeah, so well, there we are. He's uh, walking off the ground, and um, I think everyone would recognize the contribution made by him today. Not only has he made this, uh, this tremendous contribution, but uh, he's got himself into a situation where he's one of four bowlers to have taken 400 wickets in Test Match cricket, and that happened in this Test Match as well. So a wonderful performance by Wazi Makram. His colleagues coming out there to give him a pat on the back. And uh, quite a lot of the supporters here, too, from Pakistan. The Pakistan supporters appreciative of what he's done. And he certainly is a f fantastic cricketer, really is. Mind you, just for a little while there, it looked as if Murli Diran was going to put the cat amongst the pigeons. And so I think that sign pretty well says it all. Well done, Wazim. So there we are. He ended up on 20. Eunice played very well, too. Some uh, very good shots towards the end. They ended up on 32 or 47 deliveries in the circumstances. That was uh, 
that was good. Another wicket or two, and all of a sudden the tail were in, and uh, who knows what would have happened. But, uh, it's not often that you see a test match finished with a six. It was a lovely shot uh, straight down the ground. Uh, he played one a little earlier. A similar sort of shot straight down the ground. He's a, it's a lovely striker of the ball. So 42 overs to get there, 131. And Pakistan uh, partnerships, well, there we are. The, uh, the opening partnership, just 19, but from, uh, sorry, yes, uh, just 19. And then from that point on, there was a little bit of a wobble there until the 42 partnership between Wazim and Yunus Khan. And from uh, Sri Lanka's point of view, the man that uh, looked as if he was going to cause a problem initially was Zoysa. And then Murali Diran came in, got three wickets very quickly, three for 53. And uh, at that stage, uh, well, Pakistan batting was starting to really wobble. However, they managed uh, to hold it together. They held it together down the order the way they did in the first innings where uh, they put on that wonderful last wicket partnership. So there is a summary of um, this test match. 273 by Sri Lanka batting first. Pakistan responded with 266 thanks largely to that last wicket partnership. All out for 123. That was a big blow for uh, Sri Lanka. They should have made more runs in the second innings. And, uh, well, apart from that little wobble they had, uh, Pakistan managed to knock them off without too many problems. Well, Sanat, bad luck, but you had your chances. Uh, yes, sir, I think uh, we should have get more runs on the second innings. Uh, that is why we have uh, lost this game. What went wrong in the second innings? Uh, basically betting. I think middle order and the top order. I think only Marwan got uh, the 40 and uh, then anybody else didn't got uh, the big score. Well, in the first innings you had a great chance of uh, getting a good lead. Uh, yes, sorry, because uh, the last wicket we couldn't get, the last wicket and Wasim and Arshad Khan batting for, I think, one session, uh, we couldn't get them out. And uh, uh, we sh if both, in, both of them are got out, I think we had a very good chance of winning this game. And uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get them out and uh, we didn't have a big lead. Yes, 131 was never going to be a target that's easy to defend. But uh, when Murli Dharan picked up three wickets after T, you must have fancied your chances just a bit. Yeah, anyway, the fourth day of the wicket is turning a little bit, and Murli is turning anyway, right from the start. Uh, um, we couldn't get it. It's, it's not enough runs on the board to defend on. Well, still two test matches to go. Uh, what do you reckon you'll have to do to uh, compete again with Pakistan? Uh, I think we have to. Uh, all the batsmen, bat, bat, uh, I think they have to bat with a lot of responsibility uh, with the second test match in goal. Uh, yeah, that is why we have went wrong with this match batting, and we have to improve our batting. Uh. Well, bad luck in this game, Sanat. Good luck for the next test. Thank you, Ravi. Well, Sanat Jayasurya, the captain of the Sri Lankan team. Well, I'd now like to ask Mohan Khan to come up, please, and collect a cash award of 50,000 rupees to be made by Mr. Upali De Silva, the Senior Deputy General Manager, Administration and Marketing of Hatton National Bank Limited. 50,000 rupees for Mohan Khan. Well, Mohan, many congratulations. Tight test match, good team effort. Yeah, it was a tight test match, but uh, I would like to thank Wazim Akram and Al Khan. They put back us in the game, and it was a tremendous performance in the first inning by Wazim Akram. Yes, he had a great test match, but uh, 273 was a pretty formidable score, batting first on this track. Yeah, it was actually. The pitch was uh, turning. Uh, as Murli Dharan bowled in this pitch, was tremendous effort from him. And we were really scared of him uh, in the first inning. I was, the pitch was turning uh, so much. And uh, I must say thanks again, Wasim Akram, that he played a great knock in the end. Yes. Well, Wasim, I don't know how Bandula mistook you for Imran. Uh, you're a better looking guy. Uh, I don't mind called Imran instead of Wasim, but uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, I'm here because of uh, Imran. I learned a lot from him, so that doesn't matter to me at all. Well,